Do you have Mavic Mini or thinking of getting one? If you do already have one, you're possibly going to be aware that this little gadget here is a great little drone, but you're probably not going to get the range that you was advertised um, due to a variety of reasons. So you might need a little bit of help. So what I'm going to do on this video is I'm going to talk you through your options, um, what you can do to get a better range using your little Mavic Mini and when each sort of option applies to you. Right, so let's get started. So the chances are, if you have this Mavic Mini, as I already explained in the intro, you're not going to get as good a range as what was advertised. Now, it's fair to say this little cinematic beast is a really, really good price for what you pay for it, okay? It's £350 or £460 with the Fly More combo. Um, but to keep some of those costs down, unlike the other DJI Mavic drones, this runs on Wi-Fi. So there is two types of Wi-Fi. There is, well, two transmissions. There is 5.8 gigahertz, and then you have got 2.4 gigahertz. So what's the difference? 5.8 gigahertz gives you a stronger signal of a lesser range, okay? It's not a subject to interference. 2.4, however, is more subject to interference, so you would use that in non-Wi-Fi polluted areas, but that gives you a better signal over a longer range. So Here's the difference because it is worth mentioning. So if you are in America, okay, you have the FCC version of this little Mavic Mini. So that runs on 5.8 gigahertz alone. Plus, in America, they are allowed a lot more broadcasting power. So where you guys might see some of my range test videos over in the States and go, well, I can get that, I can get 4,000 meters without any you know, range extenders or anything like that, you will be able to because your drone is physically better than ours here in Europe, okay? Um, you have more broadcasting power than what we've got. So myself personally, using the 2.4 gigahertz channel, I generally maximum is 1500 meters when DJI will say this thing will do 2000 meters. But there are some things you can do to extend that, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a look at those options now and see which one is right for you. So what I'm going to show you is step one of being able to increase your range. So unfortunately, like I say, guys, for this moment, um, you in America, this isn't really relevant to you. Only in the uh, sort of Europe that those have got the CE version. So what you're going to see is a graphic now, which is showing the DJI Fly app. So what you can do is you can press the buttons in the right hand corner. OK, and you can flick across to the transmission tab. Now, what you can do is you can set up a manual channel or leave it on automatic. Now, I have actually done a test. There will be a card sort of popping up on screen right about now. Now, what you can see um, is that you have channels 1 to 13, okay? So, 1 to 13 are 2.4 gigahertz channels, if we flick over to the manual section, uh, and the rest are 5.8 gigahertz channels. So if you was flying, say, for example, in an urban area, so around a city, 5.8 gigahertz is going to be better for you. But if you're flying outdoors, like I've already mentioned, sort of out in the countryside where there's not much interference, then 2.4 gigahertz, gigahertz is better. So um, you can leave this on automatic, OK, um, I am reliably informed from DJI that channels can change um, in flight to give you a better signal. However, when I did this test, I found out that they actually still give you a better signal um, by selecting uh, a manual transmission. So what you're looking for is, as you can see on screen, you will have a mixture of red bars and you will have a mixture of green bars. So the what you're looking for is you're looking for a green bar and you want the green to be as low as possible because those bars are signaling interference. So the lower the bar with green, the less interference. That's one you want to be selecting. So what you can see here is I'm going to be selecting one channel now. That will give you a slightly stronger signal based on my experience and hopefully stop those disconnections. OK, so that's the first step you can take now. Basically, you guys from America can jump back in now because I'm going to start talk about some range extenders and uh, now sort of this becomes relevant to increasing your range as well. So let's start talking range extenders. So primarily there are two types of range extenders on the market. You have parabolic reflectors, okay, and then you have Yagi antennas. So which is best for which application, okay? So the parabolic reflectors, they because they're physically just reflecting the signal, they will work 
on 5.8 gigahertz, they will work on 2.4 gigahertz, and they will work whether you have the CE version or the FCC version, okay? So they're a really, really good all-rounder. Now we're on to the Yagis. So there is actually two different types. So these are the 2.4 gigahertz Yagis, identifiable by the fact that the bars are longer. So you can actually buy these in four, sorry, 2.4 or 5.8. You need to make sure you get the right one because if you're in America and you're buying a set of 2.4 gigahertz Yagis, they ain't gonna do anything. Uh, they're not gonna increase your range. You really need to get to the 5.8s, which are basically smaller, but work on the same sort of principle. So I have tested these parabolics, okay? And I've tested them against the Yagis. So cut long story short, this again, please go check out those videos because you'll really, really find them helpful. So the parabolics increase my range from 1,450 meters to 3,500 meters. Now I've done these tests repeatedly and 3,500 meters is about as far as about as far as I can get, if it words out, on a 2.4 gigahertz manual channel using these. Yagis, these have got me to 4,300 meters. So, you know, a, a decent chunk further than what the parabolics did. But these are quite directional, even more so than these. And what I mean by directional is you need to make sure you are pointing your controller at the drone at all times. And of course, a little bit of a tip as well, the higher you go, the less subject to interference you will have, so you will have a stronger signal. So with height comes greater signal. Just bear that in mind. There is actually a third option, which I'm gonna explore now for a range extender. So, we have looked at parabolics, we have looked at the Yagis, that's a, bear with me, right? So what do you think you get when you combine both of these range extenders? You get the Parayagis, okay? So basically, as you can see, these are a set of 2.4 gigahertz combination of parabolic reflectors and Yagi sort of antennas, okay? So I have also tested these out, so make sure you test, you check out that video as well. Um, so cut long story short, my maximum with these is 5,000 meters. So let's run through. Parabolics, range extenders, they got me 3,500 meters, all in the same location, all using the exact same settings, the same manual channel, to be, for it to be fair. The Yagis on their own got me 4,200 meters, and these got me 5,000 meters. However, these still had some life left in them, so I'm hoping to break that record soon, so don't forget to subscribe to check out that video. So, just to summarize, Basically, if you are suffering from poor range on your Mavic Mini, let's run through the steps that we can take to get you a better signal. One, raise height. Height comes with range, okay? The higher you are, the better signal you're gonna get is you're getting away from that interference. Two, select a channel manually on your DJI Fly app which is suitable for the terrain that you're flying. Make sure that you are setting a low interference channel and making sure that the drone isn't automatically picking up a high one. That will increase your range. Thirdly, you have the parabolic reflectors, which will increase your range a fair bit, and they will work whether you are on 5.8 gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz. Next step, you have the Yagis. Okay, Yagis are very directional, so you need to make sure you're constantly pointing at the drone, but again, they will increase your range a little bit further than what the parabolics do, and are a good safe all-round option. Then finally, you have the parabolics, which I have got, um, and they are just the best thing you can get on the market, um, but they are quite pricey. So you need to pick an option on what's right for you, and cut long story short, um, there is no right or wrong option, just whatever you feel comfortable with. Either way, if you follow these steps, you will get a better range than what you've been getting now. So I hope you found this uh, video helpful. Please let me know in the comment section below if you found what I'm saying useful and if it indeed increased your range. Don't forget the main point to note as well is like I say, in America you have the FCC version. I know I'm repeating myself, but you will automatically get a better range than what we will in Europe because you have more broadcasting power. But if you do use a set of uh, parabolic reflectors or 5.8 gigahertz Yagis, you will get better range too. So thank you very much for watching. At the end of this video, there's gonna be a whole host of little cards that's gonna pop up either side of me, all right? And they're gonna show you range extender tests so you can see for yourself. 
um, that what I'm preaching here in this video, I have physically tested and tried. So I am speaking from experience. Guys, if you like this channel um, and you like this video, it really does mean a lot if you give it a big thumbs up. And please, again, feel free to subscribe because the channel's doing quite well now and I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching and see you on the next video.